everybody welcome back to the channel so today's job is this one here and it's going to be completely relined and a nice a nice little revamp so as you can see the line is fully gone and it needs replacing so it's leaking a lot customers having to top it up daily so obviously that's not good and um, what we're gonna do is gonna we got a bit of a problem with the waterfall it's just old broken leaking here as well and um, you know he's, he's tried himself bless him to fix it but um, yeah the whole the whole thing is this whole waterfall is coming out it doesn't need to be as long as it is um, so we're going to shorten it, probably by a third, have more of a nice header pool at the top. That's going to drop into the bottom section and then back into the pond. And we're also going to reuse all these stones, we've got loads of stones here, so we should be able to make something quite nice out of that. And also the back edge here, we're going to take away all the slate edging. And we're going to use some of these rocks around the back part of the pond. And they're going to be partially sunk so when it's full of water, um, the base of the stones goes under the water so you don't see, see the bottom of them, which looks quite nice, nice effect. And then all the other slate edge that's at the back should have enough. And we're going to reuse that all the way around the front. So, slate around the side, stone around the back, nice waterfall, we we'll try and keep the Acer, like the Acer's are nice, um, that one up there can stay as well, and um, we'll show you how, this is how we do it, so we'll show you how you can build the pond to work for you, but what I mean by that is, uh, we'll have a nice deep spot where the pump will sit, and then we'll circulate the water around so effectively it pushes all the dirt around to the pump and the pump sends it off to the filter clean your filter out and then um, keeps the pond nice and clean itself and then also what we'll show you how to do is put all the pipe work through the walls so we won't, we won't be going over the side so you won't see it once it's done I hate seeing pipes so I'll show you how we can hide them nice and easy and um, yeah, it should be quite nice. We're gonna have a concrete perimeter all the way around just to give it some stability and also some added strength. And the way we do the concrete edge is we're actually gonna use breeze blocks. Blocks are quite a nice way of doing it because you can level them out really easy. It gives you a nice sturdy base as well is fine for um, light stonework and edging to go on top. Okay, so I've got the lining out. Now, just want to show you what type of lining you shouldn't really be buying and this is this stuff I don't even know why shops sell it to be honest it's awful I mean we get loads of work from it but fair enough but if you're if you're gonna buy a liner don't buy this just, just save a bit more money and get some rubber butyl it's much better this stuff it's like a tarp awning it's so flimsy and it's very fibrous it doesn't last long honestly don't don't even there's no point even me having a pond if you're going to use this stuff in our opinion it's absolutely awful linings out lots of ponds we come across have one problem in particular or in common and that's they don't use correct underlay underlay is so important i don't even know what this stuff is but this is the thinnest underlay i've ever seen in my life look I push through my fingers that's that's no good it's not going to do anything so a good underlay will help stop the liner from stretching and also obviously helps to prevent 
you know, roots or, or sharp objects sort of help pushing through after time. Um, use a heavy duty underlay, it's not that expensive. And um, yeah, it really, really will prolong the life of your liner and just give it some good cushioning. But this stuff's rubbish, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Sometimes we find newspapers and things as a liner and obviously they will just go mushy and wet and <laughs> or old carpets. Okay, so it's all out now. And here we've got the ground, as I mentioned before. Very odd formations going on. Not very smooth, not very flat, very bumpy. Seems quite clay the ground. Don't know whether it's just from where it's been leaking after time, it's made its own little weird little channel, I don't know, but We'll try and smooth that out a little bit, get some nice sharp edges all the way around. Okay, back again. So we're going to take up all these stones from the old wall, break up the concrete, tidy it up a little bit, and keep this lovely acer and this big one here. Move the stones out of the way. Down there somewhere. The main thing is get this waterfall out. Waterfall's all taken out. That's what's left. We're gonna flatten the top section off. Customs gonna plant that up, make a rockery out of it, get some nice plants in there, and then this front bit here we'll focus on making a smaller waterfall. Or more like a nice little water feature out of the stones and rocks that we've already taken out. The way we're going to do it, we're going to use concrete blocks to get the the shape, and also we're going to level the blocks off with the laser, so when it's full, it's absolutely perfect, nice and level all the way around. Concrete blocks are quite good because. Um, obviously the shape of them so they have a nice straight edge so leveling them is really easy and then also it gives a nice sturdy surrounding and it will stop the the ground from moving or dropping underneath so the way they had it before was just liner over the ground and then after time it moves a little bit and, and sinks a little bit um, so it gets a bit uneven so concrete blocks are nice so help to strengthen the edge um, and also you can lay fairly large stones on top. I'm not talking about massive, massive rocks. Uh, well, I wouldn't build a wall off it or anything like that, but just to give it some stability all the way around and to give you a nice straight flat side, the ideal. Okay, so the way we're gonna do it, this back edge all the way around up to the waterfall is gonna be slightly lower than the front edge. That's because we're using all those stones down there which are going to be part of this this edge on, on the back and they're all going to be slightly sunk under water so when it's when the pond levels up you won't see the concrete edge it'll go slightly over the base of all the stones gives it quite a nice effect <laughs> then all the pipe work will be hidden behind the stones on that side and the front edge we're going to use some slate all the way around the front up until the waterfall over there okay so how do we level it off so basically the concrete blocks about 100 mil deep so we find the lowest points on the pond which is probably this little area here so that's the lowest point so basically we measure 100 mil down from here plus a joint for cement so maybe about 120 mils to give it a nice thick base and um, we'll get the laser on that line 120 mil down from here and we'll mark out with marking paint all the way around this edge up until where the large stones are going to go and then from where the large stones are going to go we'll probably go down another say 50 mil from there and dig all that out and then that will ensure that the stones are a little bit lower than the actual water level itself take your time digging out the rest of the pond and keep to the, the yellow line as best as you can.
So the best thing to do, or the first thing to do, is get one block, lay it on whichever part you want, ideally on the um, the top section because the bottom section, you, it can be leveled, but it doesn't have to be perfect because the rocks are going to be underwater, so the water will level that area anyway. So the area where the blocks are on the top shelf, that needs to be perfect. So what we always do, just level one block the old-fashioned way, normal little level, get it how you want it, and then we put the laser level in the middle and then we laser the top of that block and then we just literally follow it all the way around and that way when it's full it looks absolutely perfect leveling a pond is one of the most important jobs when it comes to pond building there's nothing worse than spending all that money and time then when you fill it up at the end it's all uneven and it will certainly spoil the look also, once the uh, blocks have all gone off, you can shape the sides, you can cut them really straight with a spade. Just follow the block all the way down, you can get a nice neat edge all the way around. Okay, so when we build a pond, we always recommend to build a pond with a deep spot. So here we've got one, we've shaped it all out, and we've intentionally left a nice deep area where the pump's going to sit. That sits in there, so I don't know if you can see it or the camera gives an idea on the gradient, but it's a few planting shelves, different layers, and um, you know you could easily dig out this as your deeper spot, but the problem with that is you may get some settlement areas. So here is a nice area where perhaps a water lily may go, that's flat, then that gra gradient's down to here, and there's another flat spot over here which then drops down into where the pump's going to sit. We're going to put another inlet in that far block over there, which is going to blast the water around. Not like the rapids, but it's going to be a nice current. And that's going to circulate all the way around like that. Then centrifugal force will help push all the dirt into the middle. And then as your pump's waiting for the dirt, it goes down to the bottom bit. Then that goes into your filter clean out your filter and you've got a nice clean pond so that's how you make a nice deep area if you're using a normal pond liner and um, trust me that will really help keep your pond nice and clean without you having to do that much so we want you to put these down so I'm doing this for illustrational purposes if you are building a pond just leave some gaps okay so I wanted to do a video to show you how to do this so I've intentionally not left any gaps and there's going to be a filter around the back over there so we're going to put one of these into this wall here as an outlet go into the filter and show you how easy it is without having to use a diamond core drill okay so tools for the job you need a nine inch angle grinder a SDS drill hammer and bolster and 40 mil solvent weld tank connector and 40 mil waste pipe. Okay, so first things first, just mark out roughly where you're gonna cut. Go, a, go wider than the actual pipe. You're gonna get some cement in there. If you have it too tight, you won't be able to get enough cement in to make the joint nice and strong. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, get the grinder, we're gonna angle grind that line, that line, and then the trick is to do another one down the middle and then we'll use your bolster and just pop them out. Okay, lines are cut. So now, hammer and bolster. One on that side. Just that one. That one. So they, they popped out nice and easy. And now we'll get the SDS and we'll just chisel, chisel these out to flatten them up a bit. Gap's pretty much done. So that was nice and easy. Probably took me about five minutes to do. Um, pipe work goes in. Bent in this bit, you have a nice strong joint. So that's pretty much how we do it really. An existing wall saves having to use a diamond drill much quicker, much easier, and you get a nice strong finish. Just a nice quick way of doing it. We find it quicker sometimes just to take off maybe the pond edging or the capping. That normally pops off quite easy. Cut it out, put the uh, liner connector in, cement it back in, put the capping on. We find it's just a bit easier than 
getting a diamond core drill spending about half an hour 45 minutes drilling a hole just to get one of those in So lining's in, um, it's all folded, a bit of water in there to hold it down. Um, haven't done too bad with the folds, only a few folds in this liner considering the shape. And the next job is to connect the liner connectors, which are over here, to the actual pond liner. Basic tools, normal screwdriver, sealant, power drill, Stanley knife. Okay, I think the most difficult part with these flanges is lining everything up. So before we take it off, what I'd like to do is make a few marks. One there, and another one just over here. So you'll see in a minute when it comes to putting this back on, we'll know exactly where this needs to go, so it's nice and easy to find the screw holes. That's been taken off, screws to one side, and basically this is important to make sure that this corner here is flush to the corner down in here. So you don't want to pull it, but you need to have a little bit of slack, but you don't want to have a gap like that. So if, when it fills up, obviously the water's going to push into that gap and it's going to split the liner eventually. So keep making sure it's nice and flat, hand at the bottom, pull it up over the top. Okay. So that's ready to go. So pull it back down, get your sealant. Now don't go mad with this stuff. So some people put too much glue on and it just makes a complete mess. You don't have to go too mad with it. Okay, so it beads on. Now we pull the liner back up over. Remember holding your hand at the bottom. And that gets fastened onto there. So make sure your drill is set at the softest setting. Line your marks that you made at the back and at the front. Get a screw. Just tighten them up fairly tight, but not over tighten. Okay, now the first two screws are in. So get a Stanley knife, and we just cut that out. Nice sharp knife. Okay, pull that out. Now we take it back off. Next thing, a little bit of silicon on the front. Again, it's not too much, it's just a little bead. Get our marks. Just over there. Get 
line them up. So I only use the drill just to get them in and then we finish them off with just a hand drill, sorry a hand screw. Um, if you use that and it's a bit too powerful it can actually pull the thread out so just tighten them up nice and gently and you'll see all the silicon start coming out the side all the way around. Just a few turns so you feel a bite and then I just smooth out the middle and then on the outside as well. Okay, and that's it really. Nice and smooth, nice and neat. Didn't take overly long and went in first time. So it's just a quick video of how we installed the tank liner connectors. Doesn't take us that long. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let us know, click the like button and also subscribe if you want to see more helpful hints and tips to make your pond journey a bit sweeter. Okay, so next job on the agenda, we're gonna start laying stone here around the back. Firstly, then we're going to do the slate around the front. We've um, cleaned off the stones, jet washed any dirt and loose debris off there so they're ready to go on. We've got a 4 to 1 sharp sand mix with a bit of waterproofer in for the, um, the main stones going under the water and then the normal slate mix we'll probably just use a normal four to one sand mix of some plasticizer in there nothing too fancy um, we're gonna have to cut back the liner when we come to do the front edge we like to go half 50 50 so half liner and then half block so you can actually get a bit of bond with the with the cement and uh, the stone edge all the way around the front tools for the job, normal trail, my best mate, skinny trail, 10mm finger trail to finish things off. So the cement mix is fairly stiff, we're going to lay down a bed of cement obviously for the, the rocks to go on and then we'll just work our way around and we'll stop when we get to the waterfall area, that's going to be a little bit of a separate job uh, so we'll probably start that tomorrow and um, lay all the stones first. Once they're all in, then we'll go around and we'll start jointing them as well. The, um, the joints, we like to make them fairly thick, just so you can get a nice bit of cement in there. So when it goes off, it rock solid, um, it shouldn't move at all. Okay, so we've got most of the stones in. Well, all the back ones are pretty much in. There they are. So the idea is water's gonna be roughly sort of that high all the way around so nice thing about this method is the cement joint um, if you're not a fan of it weathers in really quick so all the algae gets on there a few months time especially in the summer you won't even notice it so and then the, uh, the back bit all of that will be backfilled to fill in the void so it will just look like you know the ground behind the stones and then the water level on the front. So that's that bit. The waterfall area we'll, we'll get to in another day. And then here we've got some slate pieces that we've laid. Quite chunky some of these actually. Should look quite nice once it's finished. Now what we'd recommend to do if you're doing a job like this with stone paving slabs or whatever type of edging try and have a nice overhang so when it fills up the water will go almost underneath the paving this gives a really nice finish and you don't really see the liner so all of these have got a nice bit of overhang and um, we normally have the water level quite high about probably about half an inch from the top of the blocks so the blocks of the front blocks remember 
the, the uh, that controls the water level, so it should look quite nice. Nice neat joints. Quite substantial. When they go off, they'll be so strong. So far, we haven't had to cut any of the slate. Um, but it does depend how they go in so sometimes you're lucky and they you can sort of puzzle them in Other times you might have to just trim a little section off just to fit them in um, so far all of those ones Have just gone naturally Okay, so most of the edging's done now So it all goes along there Quite nice chunky bits of slate actually. All gone and quite nice. We only had to cut a few. Um, you know, most of these puzzled in together. And there was only a few edges of some of the stones we had to cut, so you can't really tell the difference. But if you have to cut them, you have to cut them. It depends what stone you've got. So we've just reused everything he had already, so quite pleased with how it's all gone in, it's all nice and neat. And uh, now we're going to have a look at the waterfall. So when you're making a waterfall, obviously you've got to make sure the water comes back in. So sometimes you can do it if you have enough liner from the actual pond itself. Um, but I quite like to use a separate piece. It just gives me a bit more flexibility on how we're going to do it. So we, we've dug out just roughly. That's just a rough area for the, um, the stones to go in. Um, you, you usually need a wider area than you think, so we might have to open that up a little bit. And we're probably going to have two little drops coming down here. One drop on that top, sorry, the middle section. And I'm going to make a spillway out of stone for the top part there as well. So I think anyone who does what we do, in our mind, we know what we want to do. But reality is... You might find another stone you prefer and you just have to be quite creative on this and uh, jiggle things around um, and just ensure that the water gets back into the pond. Okay, so waterfall's done. Got a couple of little drops into the main pool. Large drop there and then spillway here at the top so all the water's going to come out through that gap. Should be quite nice. So you use quite a bit of cement. Um, we like cement. Obviously it's nice and strong, but um, it doesn't take too long to weather in, so maybe say three, four months, actually it all looks like the same part of the stone. So anywhere that gets wet, gets a nice bit of algae on or some moss, weathers in really well. And um, yeah, we build these to last as well, so it's going to be here for many years. Um, we'll trim back, obviously the underlay, sorry, the underlay, the liner on each side. So we tend to like flop up, flop out the liner, build the waterfall, and then we put it all back in, trim around the sides, and backfill, and then we'll lay a few stones around, sort of blend it all in a little bit. Okay, so last last day on the job today. Uh, pond's all cleaned out. Vacuum the last bits of old cement and stones and leaves and things that have fallen in overnight that's all out that's going to fill up we'll put some dechlorinator in so we'll treat the whole pond and then in the meantime whilst that's filling up we've got some plants to put in we've got a selection of different plants they'll go in a bit later on and we'll try and fish proof them as much as possible it's got a few nice sized ghost koi ready to go back in the waterfall's gone off nicely overnight so we'll get some water running through it today just to test the flows and everything. Then we'll drain it and then let it go off for a few more days before we actually runs it properly. The cement feels hard to touch, but inside it's still going to be uh, going off. So you don't want to um, you don't want to fill it up and leave it on too soon. Be a little bit patient with that for best results. And um, fish will be going back in today. Get the filter and everything connected up, and we'll do the pump in a minute probably the first thing we'll connect the pump up so the pump will go in the deepest spot and then um, I'll probably put in a little bit of rigid pipe work to the first shelf just so the hose doesn't hang over the edge it just looks a bit nicer a bit neater that way ok 
Okay, so it's time to backfill the waterfall. So what I normally do is backfill, leave obviously enough liner so it's higher than the water level, um, backfill it all, get that to, to the level you want, and then um, you can go around and give it a nice little trim at the end just to hide all the liner, maybe place a few rocks around the outside just to help blend it in a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, it should look really nice at the end. Okay, so job done. Everything's finished. Fish are finally back in the pond. Everything's cemented in, all the cement's gone off. Got some new plants in, water really down the bottom. Little waterfalls up and running. Some lovely ghost toy. Some tents. Mirror carp, fully scale mirror carp, the roach and the rub in there as well. So a bit of a mixture. It's probably about 2,000 gallons in there, so it's a nice amount of water. Joints, nice and strong. Look at those. If you join them properly, you know, year after year they'll stay the same. You can jet wash them, you can do everything to them, and they'll stay nice and strong. If you don't compact them in properly when you do them, you just get weak joints and eventually they'll crack. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Just a nice example of how you can reuse old stones, old rocks, uh, turn them into a nice water feature and um, something that's gonna last you years and years and years. So I hope you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, do lots of videos like this, and we'll show you how to do things. Um, like and subscribe, so show your appreciation, we'll make some more videos like this. Thank you for watching.